Hey guys, it's Dr. Justin Marcajani here. Today's video is gonna be on adrenal dysfunction in minerals. We'll talk about the layers of the adrenal glands, how important minerals are for adrenal function, and we'll talk about signs, symptoms, and testing. All right, before we dive in, click on that thumbs up button, hit it, I really appreciate it. Also, put your comments down below. Really curious to know what you think. Also, make sure you smash that bell so you get notifications of great new content coming your way. All right, let's dive in. So adrenal dysfunction, otherwise known as adrenal fatigue, which is like kind of the slang. I don't like the word fatigue because it gets confused with adrenal failure, right? We're talking about dysfunctional adrenal patterns. It's really important because your adrenals help manage stress. They make glucocorticosteroids. Gluco meaning pertains to blood, sugar, and energy, corticosteroids, stress, and inflammation. And there's also mineral corticoids produced. So, Here's your adrenal gland. It sits on top of your kidney, so right in the middle of your back or so, right around T12. And there's two primary layers to keep it simple. We have the cortex, which is the outer layer, and then we have the inner layer known as the medulla. So kind of a good little acronym in school is they teach you salt, sugar, sex. The deeper in you get, the better it gets. So the cortex is that layer. That's the SSS. So with the cortex, we have S, S, and S. So the first one is salt. These are our mineral corticoids. These help us hold on to minerals. Corticosteroids. These help us hold on to minerals. The next one are going to be sugar. These are going to be our glucocorticosteroids, aka cortisol. And then we have our sex hormones. This is going to be like DHEA etc. DHEA sulfate in particular. So that's the outer layer of the adrenals. And then we have the inner layer right here, and this is going to be norepi pure adrenaline, norepinephrine or epinephrine, right? Or catecholamine, same thing. So this is the outer layer of the adrenals. And what I wanted to really focus on are these mineral corticoids here today. These are important because mineral corticoids are designed to help us to hold on to our minerals. So especially if we're getting stressed, it's very easy to lose and pee out minerals. Very easy to pee out sodium. A common symptom we see with very stressed out adrenal glands is we may see this, this ratio here. So this is gonna be mineral ratios. One thing we may see is low sodium and high potassium. And this is a common pattern that I see with very weak adrenal glands, all right, very weak adrenals. Now acutely though, it's important, I will see a lot of potassium start to drop. Uh, we'll see it significantly go out in the urine or we'll, we'll just see it based on a lot of symptoms. We'll have a lot of hypokalemia symptoms is we'll see acute adrenal stress, we'll see very low potassium. And why? Well, we know we know acutely potassium is a powerful mineral that's used to buffer stress. So if you go into guidance physiology and you look at high cortisol levels, you're gonna see very low potassium. You'll see you're flushing out potassium to help deal with stress, to deal with the inflammation that's happening because cortisol is incredibly catabolic. So it's also very anti-inflammatory, but it breaks up a lot of tissue at the same time and the body will use a lot of potassium to buffer out that cortisol. So we'll see a lot of hypokalemia symptoms when we have acute adrenal stress. That could be heart palpitations, um, that could be headaches, that could be inability to maintain adequate levels of blood pressure, uh, it could be various mood issues. Potassium has many, many roles in the body. So potassium is really, really important. We need about 4,700 milligrams of potassium a day. So in your average serving of green vegetables, you're gonna get about 500 milligrams or so. You'll get about a gram per avocado and then sweet potato and squash, you'll get another half a gram or so. So if you get about six to seven servings of green vegetables and you get an avocado and one or two servings of squash or sweet potato, you're going to be fine. You'll get as much as you need. We may also add in something called potassium citrate supplementally to get a little bit of buffer on top because if you're in acute adrenal stress, you may be peeing out a lot of that potassium. So kind of one big sign that you may have adrenal stress and you're losing a lot of your minerals and sodium potassium is a common mineral ratio. They tend to work together. So acutely when we drop 
potassium over time or acutely, we may see a rise in sodium. And we may see with chronic adrenals, we may see that drop in sodium, we may see a rise in potassium. So this can happen like a seesaw. So kind of think of these as like a seesaw. And in general, one thing we'll see with low sodium levels is we'll see inability to maintain blood pressure. So if your blood pressure, it's really hard for you to stay in the very low 100s, like 100 over 70, 100 over 80, or if you bend over and stand up fast and you're getting dizzy, that could be an issue. That could be um, very low potassium levels, very low sodium levels, and that means you have adrenal um, essentially orthostatic hypotension, where you have the inability to maintain those mineral levels. Those minerals follow water. That water then creates adequate blood pressure. If we don't have enough blood pressure, it's gonna be hard to perfuse enough blood to the brain. So when we change body positions, we may not get that blood up there fast enough, hence the, the lightheadedness or the dizzy type of feeling. Some people will even pass out, it's very possible. So signs, symptoms, we talked about that. It could be heart rate issues, it could be mood issues, it could be brain fog issues, it could be energy issues, it could be palpitation issues. Uh, of course, fatigue as well. We may see some of the orthostatic hypotension things. So for instance, we may take our blood pressure when we're sitting, and then when we stand up, that blood pressure has to stay the same or go up by 10. If we see a drop in blood pressure when changing that body position from low to high, that's a sign that we have orthostatic hypotension. Orthostatic means we're changing body position and that blood pressure cannot compensate. So a big testing that we'll do is we'll do a lot of the adrenal cortisol rhythm testing. I'll do some of the, the dry urine testing, comprehensive hormones via Dutch, and we'll do a lot of those because we'll get to look at free cortisol which as well as total. Now, it's important because free cortisol looks at about two to 5%. Two to 5% of cortisol is free. The other is total. This looks at everything. This looks at 100%. So yeah, you'll have the free within here, but you'll also have the other 98 to 95 that's not functionally. These, this is functional. This is bioavailable. Now it's nice to see the, the free as well as the total because sometimes we'll see very low free and we'll see very low total and there'll be correlation. Sometimes we'll see very high free and very low total, and that's very common with, um, with hypothyroid issues and anemia issues, sometimes we'll see the opposite. We'll see very low free and very high total, and that's common with HPA axis dysfunction. So we like to look at these types of patterns and make sense of them, and we wanna connect it into the clinical picture. And it's really important we get enough mineral. So big recommendation that I make overall is going to be, let me just change pens here for you guys. I typically recommend, one half a teaspoon, two times per day. And I'll do Redmond's Real Salt. I love that salt, there's about 72 different minerals in there. We may also do New Salt. The new salt is potassium chloride or potassium citrate. It's one of those types of potassium salts. And about 500 micrograms is like a third or a quarter of a teaspoon. It's a very, very small amount. It doesn't taste good, but it's a really good, easy way to get extra potassium in. So I typically recommend supplementing about a gram more than what you're getting from that 47. So if you're getting 4,700 milligrams a day, I want another gram on top of it, especially if we have adrenal stress because we may be peeing it out. Okay, and of course, extra magnesium helps because magnesium is a natural sedative. It's a beta blocker. It helps relax the heart, helps relax the body from a stress perspective. So magnesium is really important, but the big ones I'm looking at here today are sodium and chloride. We're gonna get our good sodium and other minerals from our Redmond's Real Salt up here. This is our Redmond's Real Salt. And then we have the new salt down here. The new salt is gonna be the potassium. I'll just clear that up for you guys. Okay, so new salt is gonna be the potassium. Potassium down here, new salt, and our goal is about 1,000 mcg. And here we want about a half a teaspoon. I'll even go as high as a teaspoon twice a day with the Redmond's Real Salt. Some, there'll be some electrolyte blends I'll throw in instead, but these are good starting points because they're cheap, they're really efficient, 
And Redmond's is a really good product just to have on your table anyway to salt your food for seasoning and get extra minerals via your food too. Also, I typically recommend saying salt your food daily with um, these types of good minerals. All right, hope this helps. If you have any adrenal issues or you have symptoms of fatigue or energy problems, click down below, schedule a consult with myself or my colleagues and we can dive in deeper and go over what that next step would be. Hopefully you found this video helpful. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and like and you guys have a phenomenal day. Take care, bye now.